Oh, hi there. Welcome back to Isolation Cooking. What we're gonna be doing today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a risotto out of basically things that you can have in your fridge, okay? In Canada, we call it risotto. In Italy, they call it risotto. And in Australia, you call it fucking risotto, mate. All right? So here's what we have. Here's a few ingredients. If you'd like to come over here and check it out, we're gonna make a vegetable stock with basically crap that I had in my fridge, really. And I'm gonna show you a little trick with bouillon cubes. So it's kind of like a trailer park style vegetable stock that's gonna be amped up a little bit. And then I got things for the risotto. I got half a diced onion. I got one bunch of asparagus sliced up on a little bias. I got the arborio rice and some mushrooms, okay? Here you can have regular butter that everyone usually has in their fridge. Um, Make sure it's unsalted so you can season it. Mm. This, I got it from the restaurant. I've had it in my freezer for ages. Just clearing stuff out. And that's a perno butter. So it's got like a fennel flavor to it. And it's got some crab stock in there. So it's not going to make it fully vegetarian. But because using regular butter, yours is going to be full of it, fully vegetarian. And then I'm going to show you how to make a pea puree with frozen peas from your freezer, okay? It's going to be beautiful and green. And that's going to go in at the end of the risotto. All right, pea puree. Okay, we're gonna make a basil and pea puree, basil optional. I have this in my fridge. Now you're not gonna wanna put this shit on your caprese salad, okay? It's going bad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the puree to use it up, all right? So I got olive oil. Okay, about a tablespoon of olive oil. Then you start off my onions. And when I saute the onions, I just put a little bit of salt. So it takes them longer to color. You don't want them to color. You just want to sweat them out. Okay? Do this for about a minute. And the smaller you dice them, the quicker it's going to take. That's why I dice them really small. I'm not sitting here for five minutes trying to cook down my onions at a lower temperature, all right? I got my frozen peas here. Now these have been out for a little bit. What I'm going to do when I blend it up is I'm going to add half of this amount into the blender. And these are gonna be acting as my ice cubes. And it's gonna cool the puree down really quickly so it'll stay green, all right? That's a trick for you, okay? So here we go, just until they're nice and translucent like that. And then, I'm gonna chuck the peas in. Basil. Okay, I'm gonna get a little stalk. There we go. I'm just gonna cook that down a little, get all the flavors mingling in there, dancing, making them happy. All right. And then we're gonna go over to the blender and puree this. Um, the basil I put in there, that was just strictly for flavor. I'm going to throw it out. All right. Now I'm gonna put this in in the blender here. I got this badass ninja one. Works really well, I love it. Okay, so this is pretty hot. You see the steam on there? Now, when I blend it, I'm gonna add these cold peas. And that's gonna cool it down enough and keep it like a beautiful bright green, okay? All right, so I blend it all up. If you're having a tough time with your blender and it's not pureeing properly, add a little bit of liquid, a little bit of olive oil, and it'll help you out heaps, okay? So I'm gonna pass it through my mesh strainer. Now you don't have to do this. I'm just a bit anal about that kind of stuff, okay? Because then I'm gonna get a nice puree without any of the pea shells on there. Okay, and that's gonna go right through. You can do the spatula, a small ladle, a spoon if you want, but this won't take long, you know. All right, trailer park vegetable stock. I got my bouillon cubes in there, my, veg my uh, vegetarian bouillon cubes, because we went to the store and there was no um, chicken stock or anything in the tetra packs like that left at all. 
So, you know, you got to adapt sometimes in these hard times. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up cold water. So I got one cup, 250 mils of Aborio rice. And uh, you usually go three to one ratio with your stock or water when you want to make your risotto. I like to go four to one. So you have a little bit extra at the end to adjust the consistency of it. So I got my bouillon cubes in there. I should put four, because that's what the package says, but I'm gonna put three, because I'm gonna season it at the end, and I'm also gonna add whatever leftover you have in your fridge. If you got some garlic in there, chuck some garlic in. If you got some onions, chuck some onions. I got asparagus stems, because we're making asparagus, and I didn't want to throw that away, all right? So we're gonna chuck that in. And your veg stock, you need about 45 minutes to get the flavor out, and that's it, okay? It's gonna be super quick. So we're gonna get, bring that to a boil, and then we're gonna simmer it for 45 minutes. Guys, I went through my fridge a little more. I found some Italian parsley that I'm never gonna use because it's already gone yellow and it's pretty shit. So even, you know, stuff like that. Chuck it in there for a little extra flavor. All right, we got the stock going now. And now, I'll show you how to make the pea puree, okay? All right, mushrooms now, all right? Hot pan, okay? Smoking hot. Little olive oil, couple tablespoons. Mushrooms gonna soak it up. Okay, mushrooms in. We'll toss and season with a bit of salt. We got some dried thyme, optional, okay? You can put rosemary, you can put nothing, all right? get that going and then halfway through the cooking we're gonna add a bit of butter all right so while these are cooking down I'm gonna strain my veg stock okay that's been on for 45 minutes you're gonna strain that it's a good use of veg or stems or stalks that you're just normally gonna throw away all right so we got that now your veg stock can be made days in advance. You can keep it in the freezer, okay? So to make your life easier when you make risotto, you want everything prepped ahead of time. So that way, it's all gonna come together and you won't be stressed out when you make it for your family. And you're gonna be wondering to yourself, why the hell haven't I done this before? I'll show you, all right? I got my butter in there now. I was gonna add some moisture, a bit of flavor to it. You're almost done with that. The same thing with the mushrooms. You can have your mushrooms done in the fridge for days if you want. Then you just bring them out when you're gonna make your risotto. All right? Okay, cut. To make your life easy, guys, here's a little thing what we got here. Look, over here we got our veg stock, pre-done in advance. Mushrooms, pre-cooked in advance. Pea puree, optional, but Cook in advance, have it cold, ready to go. These are the things you need for when you're cooking your risotto, all right? There's only four things. It's asparagus that you gotta chop up, you gotta dice an onion, got your arborio rice measured out, and then your butter. I got perno butter, you can have regular butter, it's fine. And then for garnish, we're gonna have a bit of Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, which is in the fridge. I got pangrattata crumbs, and I got some truffle oil in my fridge, I've had it there for ages. You can use olive oil if you don't have truffle oil. Pangrattata is basically bread, dried up breadcrumbs. Um, what the Italians used to do is if they had any leftover bread, they would dry it out and then basically blitz it up or just break it apart and put it on their different pastas, risotto for texture. That's an awesome thing to do when you're ISO cooking and you got some bread left over and normally you should throw it in the bin. Don't throw it in the bin. Try it out, make some pangrattata. You can flavor it with anchovies, with chili, with garlic. It's kind of like a, like a broken up crouton, basically, all right? All right, everyone. Now that you have everything ready to go, um, rule number one, your veg stock has to be hot, okay? So you want it to be simmering. And the reason why is because if it's not hot, you're gonna keep adding your veg stock while you're stirring the risotto 
while they're cooking of it. It's gonna keep, if it's not hot, it's gonna keep reducing the temperature, which is very bad. You wanna have even temperature the whole time so the rice cooks um, evenly all the way through, okay? So, butter, a good amount, a healthy amount, okay? That's a key to a good risotto, lots of butter. So we're gonna melt that down. And then we're gonna add our onions. So we're gonna sweat these out, no color. A little bit of salt again. That'll help the moisture get out of the onions and it'll sweat them better and you won't get any color on them. So we're gonna do this. All right. So we've been sweating them out for a couple minutes now. So they're nice and translucent. Good healthy amount of butter at the bottom of the pan there. All right. Now we're gonna add arborio rice. So I got 250 mils there, one cup, whatever you wanna say. And now we're gonna stir that around with the onions and toast off the rice. So we're gonna do this for about a minute, okay? All right, so we've been toasting it for a couple minutes now. Now it's ready to go. So you don't start off with your stock, okay? What you do? A bit of vino, all right? It's about 200 mils of vino, any kind of white wine you want. I got a uh, Pinot Grigio here. It's been in the fridge for a while, <laughs> surprisingly. So now we're gonna reduce that down. And then once we cook off the wine, we're gonna keep adding our stock, okay? So bear with me for one minute. When you make your risotto, you do want to keep stirring it, okay? Stirring, stirring, stirring. But now that you got everything together, all your ingredients, this is pretty much all you got to do. And then near the end, we'll add everything together and your risotto will be complete. So now you got your hot stock going in there, bringing the temperature up. And this is pretty much what you're gonna be doing for 20 minutes. All right, we'll come back in 10 minutes and I'll show you what's up. All right, so we've been cooking, it's cooking down now. So now that it gets to about this point, when it's been reducing, it gets a little bit thicker. You can see the bottom of the pan, add a little bit more stock. And then repeat. And you don't have to stir it the whole time. Just wanna keep making sure that it's getting moved around so all the rice is cooking evenly. So I'm gonna let that sit for 30 seconds or a minute. And then I come back to it, give it a stir, make sure it's all good. You're babysitting it, all right? All right, so we're on about 10 minutes now. And you're probably asking yourself, what do I do? Is it cooked? I don't know. How much longer do I go to add more stock? You know what you do? Simmer down. Pull yourself together. Just get a fucking spoon and give it a taste, okay? All right. So if you taste a firm center of the rice, and it's still not broken down, but just the outside is cooked, and you know what? You're halfway there, okay? And like I said, it's been 10 minutes. Probably got 20 minutes to go or 20 minutes total. So we're still gonna keep stirring, okay? Keep watching it, keep babysitting. Okay. okay, so this is a very important part. We are almost done. Got about maybe five minutes left, okay? So when you taste it and you're like, all right, that rice is pretty much almost cooked. It's still got a bit of bite to it. And that's what you want. If you want yours softer, then you cook it for longer, okay? But when it gets to this point, you do want a creamy finish. So I got one more scoop full in there. And I had a liter 
of stock for 250 mils of rice. So I got about that much left over, but that's okay. You can make a soup tomorrow, do whatever you want, but you do want, you don't, you always want a little more stock left over. Make sure you have enough. You don't want to run out of stock, okay? Now, I'm going to add my butter to it. That's my Perno butter. You're going to say, hey, that's a lot of butter. And you know what? It is a lot of butter, okay? But you need this to make a nice creamy risotto. Okay, so we're gonna stir that in. I'm gonna let that emulsify. Now, while this is cooking down and finishing, you do not wanna split your butter, okay? If you split your butter, you pretty much ruin dinner, okay? Here we go. So we're getting there now, guys. Very important part. So butter cooled it down a bit. And guys, I got this on uh, number six on my stove. So it's like medium, just above medium. Um, every stove is gonna be different, but you pretty much just want it to be bubbling away like this. That's it, you don't want it to be rapid boiling. You don't have to be adding stock every like 15 seconds. You just want it to be on a nice simmer. So this is a good consistency. So it's getting creamy like that. Now we're getting there. Always keep a spoon with you, give it a taste. All right, that's almost done. I like mine al dente, which means to the tooth. So you want a little bit of bite in that rice. Some people would say it's not cooked, but uh, any Italian would tell you you're wrong, all right? So here we go. So this is the important part, you wanna keep it moving, keep it emulsified, don't split your butter. Now we're gonna add our mushrooms and our asparagus. I don't have this asparagus cooked at all. It's just raw, it's cut pretty small, so it's literally gonna take a minute to cook in there, okay? So you're gonna add that in. Give it a good stir. And that heat, it's gonna keep it cooking. Now you see how it thickened up a lot? I don't want it to thicken up and that's why you have your backup stock. Adjust the consistency. If you like it really thick, don't add anything to it. I like it loose. Once it hits the plate, it should spread out to a nice flat surface. It shouldn't be going up in like a mound like rice, you know? So now we're gonna get all the flavors together. It's going perfect. All right. And then pretty soon we're gonna add our pea puree. And then we're laughing. We're laughing. Give it another taste, guys. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Sometimes I impress myself, okay? Sometimes. All right, so we'll let that cook for a little bit. Get the temperature back up. And then, now I got my pea puree, okay? Gonna add a little bit and see if I need to add more, okay? There we go, look at that. So this, I'm just gonna crank the heat up because I want this to come back to a boil very quickly and get reduced down to the point that I need it to. So when you add your pea puree, you don't want it to cook too long because your pea puree is gonna go brown, okay? So that's why you wanna add it right at the end, bring it back to the boil, get it to the consistency you want, and then you plate it, all right? All right, I've had this back on the heat for about two minutes, so don't be shy. It's not gonna go brown, your pea puree won't go brown right away. You got a bit of time to mess around with your uh, consistency that you want, but that's what I like. So it's like nice and creamy, okay? That's what you want. You don't want a big clump that's not gonna spoon out of your ladle like that, okay? That's what you want, okay? So, I'm gonna go with like a 
like a spoon and a half here. And now I know what you guys are all thinking. Um, yes, my wife is very, very lucky, okay? <laughs> okay, so we got a little bit extra, but just for the sake of plating, to make it look nice, I'm just gonna go with this, okay? So your risotto, if you shake it and tap it, it should go all around from edge to edge, okay? That's what you want. Now, I got the pangrattata, which is a leftover bread that I toasted. And that's really good texture on your risotto. So it gives it a bit of a crunch. Okay. So I got that. Now I got the Reggiano. You can use grana padano, whatever Parmesan you got. So I'm gonna grate that on. All over top. Okay, and then I got the truffle oil. If you don't have truffle oil, use olive oil. Just like a good olive oil though. That's beautiful flavor to it. And then just a little bit of cracked pepper, okay? And there is your isolation risotto with stuff you had left over in the fridge, okay? There we go. Thank you guys. Are you impressed? Stevie's not. <laughs>